So last time we derived the Euler product formula for the Riemann zeta function. And what that looked like was that the zeta function, zeta of s, which I'll remind you is equal to the sum from one to infinity, one over n to the s, we found that this whole thing was equal to a product over every prime number of one over one minus that prime number raised to the minus s. And in the process of doing this, we also found that one over uh, zeta was exactly this thing, but I mean, flip all the terms that you're taking the product of. And, and so that was equal to uh, a similar product over primes, but of the form one minus one over p to the s. And what I wanna do is I wanna take a closer look at this guy right here. And in particular, I wanna look at some partial products of this whole thing. So, so let's do that. So uh, if we do that, what are we gonna see? We see that we have this product, one minus one over p to the s. Let's look at say, I don't know, the first four terms. The first four terms are gonna be one minus one over two to the s. Second term is gonna be one minus one over three to the s. Third term is gonna be one minus one over five to the s. And then the fourth term will be one minus one over seven to the s and then you know you keep going okay well uh, that's great now what i want to do is just multiply out these first couple terms right here and, and get a feel for what this thing actually looks like when we multiply it out and so what, what is this thing equal to well uh, you can multiply this out and, I, and i've already done this because this is you know you know three terms it's it's kind of annoying to do and so when you when you when you do this out what do you get you get one minus one over to the s, minus one over three to the s, minus one over five to the s, plus one over six to the s, plus one over 10 to the s, plus one over 15 to the s, minus one over 30 to the s. These are our first three terms, and then you have one minus one over seven to the s, and you can keep going. All right, let's 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 take a look at this right here. So. What I mean, let, let's think about what the, what's happening with this product here. Well, one thing is that we know for sure that our product's going to have these these terms will be part of it because we're going to have you know every, every subsequent term is going to have a one in it. And so, if we were to multiply everything out, we would have some big sum, and these terms would all show up in it. And then we'd have some higher order terms because of this one over seven, and then you know one over you know what was the next prime eleven. And so, you're going to have that. But, but as, as writing this as a series, which is what I'm thinking about now, we're, we're definitely gonna have these terms. And let, let's think about what, what's happening with these terms right here. Uh, what's, what's going on? Well, we have one over two, one over three, one over five, one over six. All right, well, we skipped four. Why don't we have one over four? Well, we don't have one over four because the only way we would get that is if we had one over two at s squared. Or if we had, if we had, if we were multiplying two, uh, two of these one over twos, but we don't have that, um, so we're never going to going to get a four. You know, what about eight? Same reason. We're never going to have some one over four times some one over two. Uh, why don't we have you know one over twelve? Well, we don't have one over twelve because we're never going to have some one over four times some one over three. You know, what, what's the pattern here? The pattern here is that there are no terms that show up in this sum where this n, n to the s in the denominator, has as its prime factorization a square. So you see what I'm saying? You can't have any denominator here that has in its prime factorization a square, because that would mean that you had to square one of these primes right here, but we, we're not doing that. We're explicitly writing this thing such that every prime can only show up once ever in these terms right here. And because of that, you're never going to get some one over four. You're never going to get some, you know, one over eight. You're never going to get anything that has a prime factor being squared. Okay, so that that tells us something about the, uh, these terms right here. What else can we see? Well, some terms are negative, some terms are positive. And where's that coming from? Well, we can kind of see it from this right here. We see that you know we have a minus sign here, minus sign here, minus sign there. So if you're if you multiply three terms together, that is, if your term down here has three prime factors, what's gonna happen? That's minus one to the three, that you're gonna get a minus sign. And if you have just two, you'll, you'll get a plus sign. And so the number of prime factors that you have for these numbers down here, whether it's even or odd, determines the sign. 
determines whether or not it's negative. In this case, if there's one prime factor, it's negative. If there's two, it's positive, and so on and so forth. And so what this means is that, so, so what we've done really then is we figured out that if we write this thing as a series, we know what the coefficients should be. And that's what I want to do right here. Let's, let's, let's write this as a, as a series. Uh, we're saying that 1 over zeta of s is equal to, well, let's, 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 yeah, let's go with this, do this as a series. Well, it's going to be, you know, n to the s. But then we have to, then, then we, we need something that says, all right, uh, if, it, if, if, n, if n has an even number of prime factors, it's negative, an odd number of prime factors, uh, it's, or, or rather, an even number of prime factors, it's plus, an odd number, it's minus. And then if it's a number like 4 or 12 or something where its prime factorization has uh, the same number showing up multiple times, then it's 0. And the name for that function is the Mobius function. And I'll write it out right here because this, this can be a little bit confusing unless you really think it through. So this Mobius function, what it tells us is that uh, it's equal to 1 if n is square free, which is, you know, in its prime factorization, uh, there is no term that shows up multiple times. And, and it has an even number of factors. Even number of factors. So, so that's what we were saying before. If like 1 over 6 to the s right here, what happens? 6 has an even number of factors. It factors into 2 and 3. And so it gets a 1. Okay, that's great. Uh, what about minus 1? Well, n still has to be square free. But now, instead of having an even number of factors, you have to have an odd number of factors. Just like, uh, just like this number 5 here. I mean, 5 has one prime factor. It's, it's, it is prime itself. And so you get a minus sign. Same with this number 30 right here. 30 is going to factor into what? It's going to factor into 3 times... 10, which is 5 times 2, so 3 prime factors. And because of that, we get this minus sign right here. Uh, and so that's that's where this comes from. And then everything else, that is everything else which has uh, a square a, a square in its prime factorization or, or cube or anything higher gets a 0, like 4 or 8 or 12 or 14. Or, or I mean not 14 because 14 is a um, higher order, but but you, you see what I'm saying. Four four wouldn't be there. Eight wouldn't be there. Uh, those types of terms. Twelve won't be there. Uh, th those terms where you have a prime factorization with the term showing up more than once won't be there. And so we've done it. We've managed to express uh, one over our zeta function, which which we we started out as this as this prod infinite product form, and we rewrote it as a sum which looks very similar to the original zeta function, right? You know, 1 over n to the s. But with this uh, funny uh, kind of number theory looking Mobius function, which, which, uh, which takes its sign or value based on this n right here. So I'll circle that and we've done it.